Hello everybody, welcome back to the Ultimate Pool YouTube channel. It is all about the British Open this weekend. This beautiful trophy right here is up for grabs. Day one of the competition got underway today. Loads and loads of action, hundreds of tables in use. It's been hectic. We've got all the action for the main table featured for you right here, right now. All the action for the main table on day one is here. And it is Elliot Glover who will have the first break off of the tournament live on the arena table. Oh, not the start he wanted though. That's a disappointment with the cut break. You often don't get the cue ball going anywhere near a pocket and that's a tough in off for him. Yeah, you can see the wry sort of smile. There's nothing he does really wrong here. That's pretty tough. It didn't feel like the best connection, but yeah, very tough to go in off like that. The cue ball was nowhere near. Well, weirdly for a you know, a break with not the best connection, especially off a cut break, it's actually not a bad looking split. There is a little bit of work to do. Sean would obviously not mind reds. His issue is the one by the break line. And if you are thinking like I am, cool, that table looks crystal sharp. Well, with good reason. All the tables here, uh, players in Newcastle underline have been reclothed and resurfaced, re-readied for this event this weekend. But as is pretty much expected, this arena table will be the the quicker of the tables out there. Sean has got plenty of experience on it. This will offer sort of no surprises to him. And the one thing you get with the longer races as well, you get the opportunity to bed in. It doesn't feel quite as severe. You've got an opportunity just to fill your way in. And that also includes feeling your way into sort of the table and, and just getting a feel for out there. He's got himself in a position where these reds do go. Connection to the two either side of the eight ball aren't brilliant. So he's going to have to just thread the needle through the, the gap of the yellows here. Looks like the natural should be fine. Oh, he's going up the table, so he's going to take the, the red. I thought the way he was lining it up, I thought he was going to go in the centre pocket, which was a surprise, but it makes the uh, obvious sense of going this way round. Keep it as simple as possible. Really nice start this for Sean. I know it's a long race, but he's off to a very smooth finish where he's pretty much in perfect position throughout. Dry, but there's not much on, if anything. I said after the opening frame where Sean made that reverse clearance that Elliot will get enough chances in this match. It's, you know, it takes some performance not to get the, the chances you need. He just hasn't made the most of the table time he's had. He could be a, oh, that's inventive. Yeah. Very inventive. Is this, has he played it? Yeah, you have to say it probably is. I mean, if it is. That's well, brilliant. That's our shot of the tournament so far. Very yeah. early days, but I mean, that's spectacular in uh, in this schedule. So Joe Connor, Matthew Challen will be our next game on live here on Ultimate Pool TV. Sean Story continues to thump that break, but it is his first dry break of the day. He was probably due one, just because no one can break perfect. Yeah, and it looks an awkward layout, but it's actually very doable, this one, for Elliot. The, uh, the three ball plant to the top of the table is there for him. It deals with the one on the cushion and the one that's blocked by the yellow. So the, once that shot's played, as long as the yellow doesn't tie up another another red, it should be wide open for a reverse clearance. It 
it's okay, you're not perfect. Could have done with the the red sort of sitting more in in the open, nearer the pocket. It's gone to a slightly tricky position. And he's gone a, a little bit too far up the table with the cue ball, if we're being critical. Straight, Which we are. Straight in, top left would have been perfect. Could have topped through just short of straight left center again because he wants to get above the brake line and he doesn't have an angle to do that off either ball. That's excellent. That's an excellent positional shot. Found the gap he was looking for and he's left himself just the right side of straight, just. Has to force it a touch, but he's, you can do that on these tables. Even now though, because those two have gone to where they've gone and you couldn't get there off the previous shot, I mean, you have to take these two back to back and that is actually a little bit tricky. Mm, he's okay. Yeah, he'll he's, take that. He's, he's got a shot to play, but he's he's okay. I Just think the dead weight works. Dead weight leaves him on the eight ball. If he has to go and use the bottom cushion, there's a bit more work in this. Oh, he stuns it in. Oh, that was the danger, though. He almost... I mean, you'll correct me if I'm wrong. It almost looked like he decelerated on that a little bit. Just didn't it, it quite was, dig into it enough. It's an, it's an edgy one, though. It, I know what you're saying, but it's just... It's such an edgy one because you're trying to stun it, but you want it to kill and, and stop quickly. Yeah. It's not one where you can stun and really punch through it. I just think with a little bit more into that and you you nailed on to hit the side cushion rather than flirt with the middle pocket and you'll have a shot. Yeah, I know what you say. If you really bite into it then and, and use the side cushion, whereas he was trying to hold it in the middle of the table and, and not go to the cushion at all. That, to me at least, looked like the sort of the safest shot. Do you know what I mean? Rather than yeah. necessarily playing around with pace control and worrying about, you know, well, being I was, blocked off by balls, potentially. I was wondering whether the natural line was to the right-hand side of the bottom corner pocket and therefore you could play that two cushions up for the eight ball. It, it was really tough just to drop it in and hold absolutely dead weight, but that shot looked like it might just about be available as well. just not quite been on it as Elliot in this match just the back end of a few finishes that he's had the chances he's had have just got awkward and you know with balance of chances here certainly the scoreline shouldn't be 6-1 yeah staring 7-1 seven seven one. One, yeah, yeah. Elliot's had issue. enough to be be level in this match comfortably oh that's a very poor one from from Sean. Oh, wow. I mean, you want to be somewhere near the left centre pocket, and he's <laughs> well, below he anywhere the near where he is. Yeah. yeah, that's a crazy one. I mean, he's trying to get below the centre pocket so he's straighter in on it, but I mean, you edge higher on it because you still have a shot. This will cut, I think. It is thin, and his keyboard is doing some mileage. What a recovery shot. <laughs> what a recovery shot. Very good. Wow, that's incredible. Was not expecting that, however. That really was incredible. I mean, he was a touch awkward on it, but it, I mean, the shot before was so good. Really surprised to see the missed eight ball, and obviously goes without saying that this has to go for Elliot Glover, doesn't it? It's, it can't let Sean off the hook for a missed eight ball like that. And he doesn't just. Well, Elliot Glover's found his break. <laughs> the last two have been. Bangers. Oh, if he's not on this red to top right, he's been very unfortunate. I think he is. I think he's okay. You see Sean there acknowledging the break as well. You just know, you hear the sound and 
it's the quality of that strike and the explosion. It just it sounds different when you get it right. By far and away, Elliot's best break of the the match. get right first shot went a smidge too far this time he's just got himself awkward again that's an excellent shot Lovely, really nicely controlled. He's still going to have to hit this well to get up onto the eight ball. He's just that touch straight on it. You really want to force this to try and get up. If you top it, you go towards the eight ball, which is not what you want. You're going to really dig in it and punch it. Oh. Yeah, just hard. Just a hard shot. It's one of those that it's hard to get a good outcome on. Maybe the last shot he plays in this match. sure that the, the yellow passes the red at the bottom of the table. Interesting to see how Sean goes about this. Does he play safe? Does he find a way to get to the left hand side of that yellow? It, it might squeeze in. It, it might be one of those deceptive ones that does just squeeze in but well the fact he's looking down the left hand side tells me that it, it definitely doesn't then. wasn't a good angle for him at the top of the table and now he's awkward he can't can't get to where he needs to as in bottom left hand corner of the table from here well the natural isn't can he get to the bottom one of these two and then he can come across the table oh, I think he can not far enough down the table and he's got he's too straight in or just off straight the wrong way on the yellow to right centre. Is this a point where you try and draw back? I think he has to. I think if he gets the cue ball anywhere on the left side rail, I don't think Elliot can do much with that red. I think anywhere really. I think that I don't think there's a gap between the, the eight ball and the yellow, so I think he could leave it near the top right hand corner pocket and be fine. It's an easy hit for, for Elliot, of course, but that will just open up the pocket. Yeah, no attempt to pot that, of course. And he'll actually be annoyed that the yellow's gone so close to the cushion. Yeah, it's a slightly sloppy shot, but he was under a little bit of shot clock pressure, so we'll, we'll let him off.
All that. Does Sean go for it? I, I don't know if he needs to. He, if he feels he can get onto the, the yellow on the cushion nicely. He can develop yellow, can't he? Yeah. That shot for Elliot wasn't really going to do anything. That's the, the problem. It, it, he can still only get back in this frame with a mistake from Sean Storey. That, that, not even a holding shot, if you like. It's Was he better off trying to be... Oh, how good's that pot? Into the centre. Amazing. Obviously, it's a free shot for Sean. But yeah, you have to say, would, would it be just been better for Elliot just to give the eight, or give the red a ride, or you know, do something different? Because just doing what he did, even if Sean had to play safe off it, you know, it, it was still going to leave him as a massive second favourite. So the first winner. Well, on the TV table in the 2024 Ultimate Pool British Open is autopilot. Sean Storey gets the victory over Elliot Glover. This is our second session and Joe O'Connor is going to get the first, first chance here. Hot off a good result in the snooker, making it through to the final this week. Is that Championship League? Yeah, right. lost out to Mark Selby. Obviously. Easy draw in the final. <laughs> yeah. He they, play, they practice together, don't they, anyway? They're, they're, I think they're buddies, aren't they? Both from sure. Leicester, yeah. Not 100%. I know they, I'm pretty sure they used to practice together, at least, even if they don't now. But Yeah, Joe's very good at pool. He obviously made a final. Um, and he's not been in that many events, has he, to be fair? so. Um, yeah, I think did you play? I think you played him in his first Ultimate Pool match. Yeah, I thought we were on the TV for that. Well, it first changed format to the... To the top 32 not being straight in if you like but um into the last 64 where we had to qualify as well so yeah i had him and uh he had to pull roll off a long way to be fair in that match but i think i've got beat him seven three or seven four played okay you know since then he has gone on to have a really good run and, and some really good results made the final middle of last year he was so close to him that that's the shot where christophe lambert played one of the craziest shots i've ever seen in my life <laughs> We on yeah. comms for that? Uh, yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it was incredible, wasn't it? I mean, I saw it coming as well. I thought, oh, that is going to flick the yellow out of the way and knock it. Oh, oh not, gone, not gone well at all, that, unfortunately. And that's the snooker. Uh, he's not played to hit the yellow there, but that's where this cue ball and particularly the new cloth will catch out the snooker players temporarily because that's gripped more than he's expecting. He's expecting to kind of track the line of the red and he's just like a ball's width offline, if you like, and... Uh, now you're in trouble because uh, what does he do with that red on the cushion probably do you hold back here the problem is the two yellows block the double if it was just one yellow you could move the yellow over the pocket but both yellows block the double I don't know if it trebles to the top corner maybe if that's what he's thinking no safety options now maybe it's a treble to the top left as we look he knows all the shots and all the angles. and He's a junior world champion as well, isn't it, Paul? Joe? Yeah. And he started started his Q Sports career in Paul, as far as I know. So, yeah, he's looking at the treble. This will square up. He's more likely to miss this to the left cushion than the top cushion, in my opinion. It will square up off the second cushion to how hard he hits it. Oh, he's paid the back double. It did go. Oh, oh that's incredible. What a shot. Oh, why? And I he had no idea. He, he can't have had the full pocket there. That was quarter of a pocket. Is there a replay on that? That was that must have gone so oh, close we'll to both those years. What a shot that was. We will see that again. That was incredible. I did not think that went. Well, Joe O'Connor coming up big in the opening frame here. He's had quite a breakaway and just starting to get back into it. The same ball again, Joe. I think he's made that red in the middle every time. The ball he's hitting that is one of the balls that can go straight in when you cut break. But very controlled and keeps leaving open chances. He's, he hasn't got a great starter ball here. I think he'll take the yellow to the top left corner from the normal view or the top right corner from this view. And just punch punch across. So once this goes in, they're all pretty open from there. He's caught it thick. Second pot missed. Again, the beep, beep as he pulled his backswing might have distracted him he won't be used to that at all from the snooker background but what a chance again for Matty so the problem yellow is the one near the red there near the racking triangle I think you can get rid of it third shot here so play 
the yellow straight down to his bottom right corner. Natural angle on the one to bottom left corner. And then you're up for your tricky ball. And then the rest will have a bit more margin for error. That's how I'd see it. You can see that's the one he's got all his focus on. How's he going to get into that area where he just pointed his cue? He's, having a, he's not he's not seen a way he's comfortable doing it. Gone straight at it. That's also fine. Very nice shot. Again, it won't check side as much as you think. That's why he's looking confused. You just don't get that grip off the cushion with these new cloths and clean balls and everything. It hasn't, hasn't got anything to grip onto when you put that lots of left-hand spin on, but it almost came off as if there was no spin on the ball. So confused him a bit. He was trying to miss the red completely there, and he's hit it full ball. So He's OK, fine. though, yeah. Still has a, another option. And this is why you need to get rid of your bad balls early, because you have that margin for error if you do get shot wrong later on. Whereas if you're leaving it late and you don't land where you need to land, you're in trouble and you've only got one ball left on the table or whatever, so. Probably try and stay away from the plant here. I mean, it's fine, but there's a very small chance this ball ends up on the rail. He's, he's played it in a way where it shouldn't, but. Could have played bottom left first and then just the one over the middle. And the ball he just hit then last, but that's fine. And uh, we didn't see this coming at 2-0, to be fair. I certainly didn't. No, and it's amazing, isn't it? It was a let-off from Joe O'Connor. Miss pot to the bottom left, it let Matty in. He's made the couple of balls required and... He's been released, allowed him time into the foul. match. Time and then foul the next frame. Time foul in the next, you're right. And yeah, 4 2 now. And he looks a different player than he did in the opening <laughs> two chances he had in the match. Well, not this time. He caught that one slightly. That's probably the worst strike of the whole uh, match for him on the cut break. Yeah, they split completely differently, haven't they? Just that touch thinner, I think. Do you think? Maybe yeah, yeah, it was. Just it was. touch thing. You, you see, see the cue ball lower. Yeah, yeah, the cue ball was tracking towards the opposite um, corner, but it got it got kicked. But yeah, you're right. You've got a real hawk eye for this, Simon. I have done a lot of commentary on this uh, on this arena. I didn't pick up that he caught that thin then. First glance. A lot of it's sound actually, though. It just sounds different. You know, just you see that the way it explodes and the the sound it gives off. It's just not the same. Oh. It's flirting with danger. He has a backup plan. Can still I like red off yellow here to play the plant. It opens that okay. whole area up. He's pretty much dead straight on it as well. Then he's only got one problem ball left. Red off yellow. Get the yellow out of the way. It's a real natural shot. I know he's not playing it. Mm. Now, now it's probably best best to hold back. We've had a dish fest. He's trying to double, is he? I don't mind the double because you kind of block. Yeah, I don't even know if he necessarily wanted that in, but it's a nice shot. Opens up the area. I mean, there is a finish for Joe, and he's left him plumb straight on his awkward ball to the top right. Kind of forced to go for it, really. But there's a finish there. The eight ball will skill shot, worst case, to the bottom right, or combination shot to the bottom right, last. So, yeah, there's, these all go. Joe wasn't sure if that was in, but I mean, at that pace in these conditions, that's always dropping, even though it did, did hit the near draw. Just the eight ball, imagine. I don't know how comfortable Joe would be with a combination shot, but oh, he's missed, wow. It looked like he was lined up there as well. That's the third ball he's missed in the match, and not been that tricky either. Good temperament, you see, he just wipes it away. It's like it never happened. He never shows anything out there. 
No, he's had a few smiles today, which is, uh, again, unusual. He doesn't normally show that side of things either. But, yeah, if you're going to show any emotion, it's better better to have a laugh about something than be upset about it. If you do have to show anything, I mean, it's very hard to show no emotion. You know, it's very difficult for me anyway, but try and show the minimum. Lost the cue ball there. This is trouble. I don't think he can hold with the only potable ball he's got right now. And I don't think he can go around the table with it either. If he did, it'd be threading the needle. Can he hold? Maybe he can hold in the middle of the table here. Really tried to pot it thick. You could hold that, to be fair, but that was, that was a smelly one. He could pot it thinner and still hold, you're right. That's... Uh such a big frame as well. And what's Joe got to go out here? Is there, is there a realistic pot on? Probably not. He's obviously got a couple of thin options to the top left corner, but he's going to try and play this as a bit of a shot to nothing. There's not, not many places to hide the white, so he'd rather this went in. But he's thinking he might get some cover if he misses it. Oh, and he has found the cover. Wow. You can see there wasn't much room there to cover both. And uh, that could be a frame winner, could be a f effectively a match winner. This is a big swerve. Oh, I don't like this. You could catch the jaw of the middle pocket here. Oh, that's a great shot. What a shot. What a shot. Has he gone too far? That was brilliant. That's so hard to do there. Nearly caught the middle pocket. You can see, just, just missed it. And yeah, just kind of caught the red a bit thin, but I think that was about as good as you could do from there. That's a brilliant shot, isn't it? You can play the one to right middle, and if you play this with right hand side, I think you avoid the cannon on the yellow where you get it thin enough. I don't think you can get away playing this plain ball, I think you just need a fraction of right on it. Plain ball, you probably. No, he did play a plain ball, and he's. What a shot. What oh, a shot. Fabulous. Brilliant. And now he's in shape to make it all square. This is some finish if he gets these. Absolutely fantastic from Matty Challen. We're all level again. What a match this has been. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, you've got to watch out here, Matty. Wrong side of the table. He hasn't got an extension. This is going to catch him right out. Oh, he's got time. He's all right. Calm as you like, isn't it? It's like Lovely. he's, like he's oh, hugely experienced at 15 seconds a shot, and he pulls out a beautiful shot. Can he just just bump into I don't think he can avoid the yellow on the way back so can he just leave the white there and yeah he can yeah it's perfect just soft screw and he should be done wow. barring anything very unusual what a match we've seen he's took these really well and you know, the transition didn't catch him out either fantastic oh. match brilliant performance from Matty Challen that is a fantastic first taste of the ultimate pool arena brilliant performance and he defeats Joe O'Connor who will have to go into the loser's side of the draw. Yeah well look uh, my Mr Sally's got a club in Oxford and just I don't get to practice as much as I can but I, I know I'm sort of capable I'm pretty sort of natural you know what I mean so like I don't tend to practice a lot and in that I'll just wing it to be honest with you. <laughs> well if that's the strategy mate you keep on doing it, it was a fantastic performance we're uh, we're gonna let you go we're gonna bring in Dave McNamara in just a minute because our our next match is underway Charlie Earnshaw against John Rowe and what a moment this is for young Charlie Earnshaw all 16 years of him up against the ringer John Rowe who is I mean I'll ask you this in a moment, Dave. I think from a professional side of things has drawn something of a short straw here because whenever you're drawing a 16-year-old in round number one, you're on a little bit of a hiding to nothing, particularly when said 16-year-old is, you know, most recently a Challenger Series quarter-finalist. He reached a semi at the back end of last year. This is the definition of a banana skin, isn't it? first round like you say it is probably the biggest I won't say it's the biggest banana skin in the event but 
you know, it's definitely up there, isn't it? And do you know what? We all know Charlie, and we all know he can definitely win this game. He's that good. It's just the fact, you know, people look at him as a 16-year-old, which I've played county against him for a couple of years now, and the lads in the local area who don't know him, they're playing and they get beat by a kid, and they're like, oh, wow, I've been beat by a kid. I was like, that kid is better than 98% of the population of this <laughs> country, mate, so don't worry about that. And I think his results speak to himself, and recently got on the money match scene and played one of the best money match players around really with his experience and took him close so he's a uh, he's going to be special I think yeah serious serious talent really nice young lad as well and I think the key for Charlie will be just how quickly he sort of adapts to the to the main arena table because whilst this is undoubtedly a, a banana skin for for the ringer here he, he does have all the experience in the world he is a former world champion himself in 2011 and has had plenty of of minutes and matches out there on this main arena so all the sort of the fun and games of ultimate pool shouldn't be catching john Rowe out whether it be the match clock shot clock all that sort of stuff he does hold the aces in terms of experience but if charlie can settle and settle quickly there's no reason that he can't do exactly what matty challenge just did to joe o'connor 10-8 win for for matty who would have come into that as a fairly sort of not unknown but a little bit sort of unheralded into the draw and to pick off someone like Joe O'Connor first first poke and your first match on an <laughs> arena table with Ultimate Pool is, is mightily impressive it's amazing but to be fair I wouldn't say a back Matty but when I, when I seen it come out I said he could easily beat Joe I've lived with, Matt, I've lived with Matty for a few months and he's one of the best he's probably the most natural player I've ever seen I think he said that in his interview then he's quite quite, quite natural he said no he said he, he's, he's ridiculous and if he practiced as much as the top boys he would be one of the top boys that's how good Matty is but like you say he doesn't have the experience as Joe or as any of the top pros so a lot of people see that as a surprise but you know going into today and I popped in and it was five all and I said to myself he sticks with him he could just blow Joe away and to win 10 eight on your first ever first ever match on the arena table on ultimate pool it's some going Absolutely massive. John Rowe still has his extension and he's going to need it. He, he was in a little bit of trouble there. He landed off straight the wrong way on one of his reds. And, well, this is what he's got still left. Can he pull one out of the fire here? I'm surprised he's not playing the little snooker here. Oh, it's some part <laughs> from John Rowe. Sorry, John. What a shot that is. They hurt them. Oh, they, they do. What a shot this is. And he's going to roll the eight ball in as well. We'll take a look at that double in just a minute. But that did have very much the vibes there of uh, welcome to big school for Charlie Earnshaw because <laughs> plenty of older and more seasoned players have sat in that chair and have, and have watched players do that to them where it looks for all the world that John Rowe has, has made a mistake here and he's up against it. But he's got all that quality to pull out a shot like that and win the frame. Brilliant stuff from the ringer. Yeah, it's, it's an attractive one for the... Uh, that's the first real example of the of the John Rowe break. When it is good, it is it is very very good. Times are absolutely beautiful. But yeah, it's something that always attracts the players who who really back themselves because in theory the cream should rise to the top of this event. Oh. Well, Charlie, now's a big opportunity. This one, Charlie needs to take advantage, and that ball on the rails now a three-ball plant, so he's not really got a bad ball on the table. Let's see what he does. And talking about the sort of the format that we do with long races, I'd love to see a set format like the darts. Oh, big time! No, oh, I'd, I'd love to see little first threes and you know see the ups and downs. And well, all I'll say is watch this space because <laughs> there's been plenty of new tournaments announced by Ultimate Pool for this this season and, and this calendar year. It wouldn't surprise me if the uh, no, if, if the if the top table had a few tricks up their sleeve to, to spice things up I would love a little bit of set play I think it's especially with this game it, it makes it yeah. it makes it brilliant totally agree and Ultimate Pool have got a massive reputation of giving what the players want you know they wanted more tournaments they get it they wanted longer races they get it I think it's a tournament every month for the professionals now it is oh, that's a great shot, shot Charlie that. very good probably going to play the three ball plant I was talking about he just doesn't want to hit it too hard a little soft screw back up for the one near the break line doesn't want to decel either no, 
beautiful. Look where that other yellow's going. That's what I was talking about. The other yellow was going over to that red. But in two shots' time, he's going to play the development shot to bump it out and be on the other yellow near the bottom left. He can't top this through, I don't think, because I think the red might be in the way. That's what he's worried about. He might have to play a nice little soft screw and leave himself a bit more distance. This is this is quite tricky now. But he's unbelievable. Look how straight his cue action is. See, he couldn't roll it in, and yeah, he's uh, it's not where he wants to be. But he's still in the game because the red near the yellow. There's no really breakout ball for John. No, it's a horrible ball that for John. It's really on an island. Yeah, and so Charlie's got two that he can use to develop it. He's just got to play a good safe now. And because he's got to use a... He doesn't want to knock this yellow into the yellow and red. Like that. It's a good shot. I think it goes as well. It's a good shot from Charlie. Disappointed there, though, young child. Yeah, but he's, he's got to keep his head up. It's it's by no means frame over. I think we're, we're very guilty at, at times of... Sort of falling into the trap of being, you know, if it's not a break dish, it's not very good. No, I mean, some of the best players in the world don't break and dish every frame, it's all about them that can stick in and win with the B game, really. Because <coughs> you're never going to be 100% all of the time. And I think that's the only thing that separates the top pros to basically the lower lower rank pros is their B game is and yeah. is, is better than most. So. Yeah, I com completely agree. think John, in an ideal world, would love that red to have just hovered in the way of the yellow at the top of the table. I'm not sure if he's on it. He's looking like he's on it. These cameras do funny things. Well, I'm almost certain he could cut back the one that he's closest to, but I think he'd rather save that. Yeah, he's using the w losing the white if he does that. What's he looking at? A good old is look. He, is he playing it off the yellow into the left pocket? Tried. Oh, it's ambitious. And he's tied up all the yellows really as well. So John's got a big chance here to go three and a Just got to cue this one in long. Do you just wonder if that was a little glimpse of a little bit of youthful exuberance from young Charlie? That was a big time shot to take on. And John's made a lovely shot here. Big yeah, bounce. perfect. Yeah, perfect for the angle. I'm wondering if John's going to play that red on the right-hand rail, down the rail, or is he going to try and play a nice little cannon? I think he's looking, if he plays the cannon, what he's going to be left on if he doesn't leave himself on the ball that he moves, so... Oh, he's a bit short there, John. I think he was looking around the black spot there to then play the cannon. But it's just new cloth, new cushions, just plays so different. He's going to have to play on it in about two next shot, maybe. angle yeah he's just gonna it's perfect there John just to punch it across and then the black ball's probably gonna go in the same pocket he's got a, I don't think it will now I think he's got a bit much angle than he really wanted he wanted to pretty much be straight on this these are a little smelly yeah they are when the white's a bit close as well doesn't want to drift out on it the far jaw that's made it lovely New table, new rails, sliding down the rail. Yeah, very smoothly done from John Rowe. And that is 3-0 in the blink of an eye. And that last frame summed it up. It was so... I mean, but how can you... Sometimes how can you win when your opponent's just breaking like that? I mean, look at them yellows. He's got probably one tough ball, and that's the black. That's the eight ball, sorry. So. Yeah, and John actually mishit that break. Yeah, he did. Wants to be straight up and down the line of the middle of the table. And anywhere near the middle pocket. Oh, that red must go past the yellow down the rail. Yeah, I'll be on it next if he just mm. diddles this one into the middle. I well, or, or punch it all the way through. Yeah, you're queuing that well. 
And now the black goes in the middle when he moves this. So, yeah, it's good thinking from John. I actually just didn't think this wins, but it flies in. And John is rapidly... Uh, going through these. I've just been told on, in the Facebook comments, shout out to everyone who's, who's getting in touch and watching along, that it's, uh, it's now pouring down outside in Newcastle under Lyme, so that's uh, Ooh, a mistake. fantastic news for sports fans as uh, John leaves himself the double. See, I think he was trying to pop them both then, instead of dollying it in, playing trying to play the combination on both reds, and he would, would have been there for the eight ball, but now he's got to play the double, but it might double kiss. Depends how far the red is off the rail. He's going to have to punch it, but then I don't know where he's putting the eight ball. Double-double, maybe, Jamo. Toil and trouble. Double-double. There's Behind one. The yellow. Behind the yellow. Oh, he's okay. I think he's okay. I think he's doubling this. And if he pots this, Charlie, go on, mate, because it's not the yeah. whole day. Yeah, he's on the double. He's got to hit this hard to straighten it up. Has got his extension to work this out. This one would hurt. Mm, big double. Oh, 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 where's it gone? Where's it gone? It's in his wood. Oh, Charlie's there we go, Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> Look at them having a laugh. Deserve that, Charlie. All the bad luck in the game, but shame it wasn't at one all instead of 8 0. Ah, oh, brilliant. Get to see all the top game, top players in action this weekend. Yeah, we've got Steve Smart versus Luke Gilbert coming up next. Ooh. Luke Gilbert, recent Pro Series champion. Tom Cousins, Gary Carr coming up after that. That's the first match in round two. Now, a lot of you guys don't know Gary Carr, but I know Gary very well. He's one of the best players in Malta. Yeah, top and guy. He's just beat Callum Singleton. He has. That's a fantastic win. See, John, that's a good shot. And I think he's gone this route because when he pots this red, he's going to actually move this yellow out the way to put the black in this pocket, I reckon. So when he pots this, move it out of the way. There you go. Black goes past it. Yeah, how good is this? Really good from John Rowe. And there you go. See him with that lovely camera angle. Three quarters of a pocket. Charlie's picked up his cues. The ringer don't miss these. He certainly doesn't. It's a 10-1 victory for John Rowe. Super performance from the former world champion who knocks out Charlie Earnshaw and dodges at something of a banana skin. Breaking. Oh, that's yeah, such a good there. break, goodness me. Yeah, he's got kicked a bit side on it, that's probably... He would have loved that eight ball to have gone down. Is it a golden break? No, but it would have oh, cleared the okay. pocket. Shoot. It's now actually Shoot. a bit of a problem for him. Yeah. I know, yeah. but you love a golden break, I was <laughs> thinking. <laughs> okay, <imagine laughs> I think had... you'd have loved it more than Luke. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> There's, uh, there's times and places for yeah, it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, but I'll I tell agree. you what, for for how good a break that is, this looks like a horrible leave. Yeah, I think I don't know if he'd prefer red, because the red on the rail, would it sneak past the black and just nudge the black out of the way? Maybe the yellow would do it. Looks a bit tight yeah, for that. Yeah, the yellow does John. it. On, on this new cloth, though, I think it could slide in if he gets it in the right spot. And uh, he's just hit the black first. Oh, he's, has he had a nice leave? Well, if that's touching it isn't nice because you can pot the yellow and you might be able to get the cue ball behind there i think he, th i think touching? it's difficult to say i'm just trying to figure out if the uh if the red and yellow are no, no he's not i thought the yellow might be the red might be closer to the to the cue ball than the yellow in which case he could brush off just played, like that but he can do well, it though. off yeah. the one he was closest yeah, yeah. to he has played that very well If Luke can flick the yellow by the middle pocket. Needs to make sure he hits a cushion out. Yeah. Oh, it's a nice thick contact. So makes a big difference, that does. Yeah, he's left a pretty good cue ball as well. Yeah, very good. He will be very happy with that leave. I'm surprised he actually played it so hard because leaving the cue ball there 
It was always a good shout, and uh, Steve just nudges the red on top of the yellow. And the right hand cushion already go long, top left. If he gets the ball top left, he can go game. Looks a bit wide. Yeah, it is, yeah. Well, the Cuba's not bad. The way that Steve Smart qualified for the British Open yep. is he was the Welsh Open champion. Oh, wow. Courtesy of Ultimate Pool Wales. Beat yes. Ole Bale in the final. It was a good field yeah. there. Other players involved included be, yeah. Ryan Lambeth, Cole Bedford, Matt Cook, Scott Yardley. Wow. That is a. Scott Pope, Shane Thompson. Andy Williams, plenty of really, really good players in it. Yeah. Right. Just just shows the level that, that Steve Smart is, yeah, is sort of at. Yeah, what he's had to come through to get here as well. Is, uh, I think Luke's a bit disappointed if Black's tied up there, but I think, to be honest, after his last shot, he should be pretty pleased at the opportunity he's got because the ball's just laid out quite nicely for him and didn't give Steve many options. Or well, is he flying into them here? He's, he's yeah, you could just could he roll it and just tap the black or he's going to hit hit him hit John move the two reds. He's tried to move the two reds needs a bit of luck. Oh. The risk playing that yeah. shot is that he did yeah. need a little bit of luck. He just take so much control out of out of the shot. But to be fair, Luke normally comes up smelling the roses in them situations. He does. <laughs> I've practiced with him and I've seen it many a times. So he's looking. Is he looking at the up and down yeah. here? No, side cushion, yeah, this is a... Oh, he's changed his mind, yeah, okay. He'll fancy his chances here. What's what? he going, up, up three cushions? We had a look at all options. It looks like yeah, top right. cushion, bottom cushion is the yeah, way. Yeah. Oh, it's close. Oh, what an effort. <sighs> it was a great, it was great, a great effort. effort. Yeah. I mean, that would have been the most Luke Kilpert shot you've ever seen. Yeah, that would have been, and he would have loved it as well. Ah, he, would have to, he would have known Steve would have been <laughs> his head would have been rattled in the in his chair, but um, yeah, he has done it many a time, Luke. So it wouldn't be a massive surprise if he gets them. Steve's. Mm. I wasn't sure about that shot because he didn't need to play it. The balls all went, and he's he's still okay. But well, I'm, I'm close. glad you I'm glad you said that, John, because I did give you the. Uh, the big build-up on commentary not oh that long no. ago, where I, s I said, you know, you're, you, you're from a you're from a sort a certain generation yeah. of the game where you just do not play cannons whatsoever unless you have to. Yeah, you, I mean, part of it's because you see the amount of things that can go wrong on a cannon, and uh, it's always nice if you've got that cue ball under control to just put it around the table where you like it. And uh, obviously, the nicest clearances are when your opponent's got balls all over the table and you manage to sort of pick off your balls all the way around and not move one of their balls and clear up and you sort of come away from the clear thinking, I feel good, that was a good clearance, you know? No, I, I agree. Yeah, I know. You've been there. <laughs> 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 but yeah, the cannons are, uh, especially in that situation, I, th Ooh, I thought that was good at cannon enough. Um, especially in that situation, it, it really was, you know, there was nothing in the way, but... Sometimes when you're probably feeling a bit nervy or settling down, you play a cannon just to try to make the clearance a little bit easier for yourself. That's nice for skill there. Doesn't want to land straight on the bottom cushion, so needs a bounce. That's perfect. Come out for one in the middle. Left centre, right centre. Is he on the Challenger? This oh, he's got Challenger top on, isn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he's on the Challenger series. Didn't have the greatest of first weekends, actually. Steve Smart, a couple of early-ish exits, but uh, yeah, c certainly a player who will be fancying making the step up to the pros. Yeah, he looks very solid in his queuing. I suppose each year with the Challenger, we get to see new players trying to bat it out and sort of have, as all the better players sort of become pro or get up there you know all the names and then you, you see other names you know we get to learn other names that we didn't know yeah agreed but, I mean obviously people from around Wales know Steve Smart but you know I've I might I'm just going to do a bit of research alright you, you come yeah. back to me mate yeah, yeah. Well, Luke back from his uh, 
Back from his comfort break, breaking off quite nicely and coming up dry. Not changing his fortunes any. Pretty good break that as well from Lightning. find it uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah. don't don't you worry mate it, it, oh. it, it, it's not it's Who, not is that it, important. what round are they up to I I it's like a know. tournament format isn't it yeah i'm not i'm not sure i've not been i've not been an avid viewer i'm not sort of setting my watch by it but uh, it's uh, yeah. it's been, it's been good fun yeah it's yeah players all getting involved which is nice so what watch what's happened with it then it's just a bit of fun yeah who decides no ranking points don't get excited oh damn it Prize money. <laughs> <laughs> Designer of the year. Yours is uh, quite muted this year. I, th I thought, John. Yeah, I, I quite just taking um, some colour out of it. Yeah, well, I've got a couple of diff basically just different colours, and I didn't want to. Uh, I just. Uh, I don't know really. I, s I see a couple of. The designs of the shirts. Thought, oh, that's quite a nice design. I'll just keep it simple. I was going to go plain black, to be honest, but I just thought a bit different. I've got a few different shirts, different colours as well, so they all stay keep the same same pattern, just different colours. Okay. And uh, didn't go too too overboard of it. I've quite got, quite muted. Yeah, I've got and I've got my other shirts at home. I keep them so wash a car of them or something. <laughs> I'll get an actual use eventually. <laughs> well, Steve, another good chance here. I don't know if it'll be building up on him, the chances he's missed, but... Well, the thing is, it, it, I think it's difficult it. for it to weigh on your mind when you're still winning frames and you've got yeah, a comfortable he lead. Chance. He's probably that a little bit thick there. I think he needs to put that thin. He's cute. This makes it a little bit more awkward, this black. Good shot, modern. Yeah, cued it well. Heart of the pocket for Steve Smart. Yeah. It's six three or five four. It's a huge frame. This. Yeah. Oh, he hasn't made it off the red, has he? Oh, oh wowie! Well, wowie! <laughs> oh. Team blessed, you say? Luke's not used to that. <laughs> you get a bit of a. Well, it doesn't mean nothing if he doesn't pot this, is it? So. Oh, you're it's joking. So. Yeah, that's it's all irrelevant. That is. You're joking. I, j I just, I think Luke wins this match. To be honest, I say it early, but I just feel it. Steve just missed too many chances, has he? It feels that way. You know, you, you can easily say it should be nine nil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's had a chance in every yeah, single yeah, frame, yeah. and he's had some good chances in some. And and you know he has won five of them so yeah yeah 100%. it's not like he's played badly no no but there's there's been some left out there for sure yeah i'd have to get in a fluke like that yeah you've just got to make that eight ball make the eight ball because then it probably there's a good chance of it breaking the back of the match the other yeah. way he could have played the white and black come away from the cushion at the same time would have snooked him long and uh left black over the middle left the double shot he's got the double Needs it off the cushion. Uh, I tell you what, this is not all over yet. This is a smelly little shot, that, but it's got it. One thing's for absolutely sure, he needs to get these in a minute, doesn't he? he? Needs to be under a minute clearance. Needs a ball. Needs Gets a ball. A ball. Gets a ball. How's the layout? Red's a nice plant first shot. He's got to play it. It might be plant first shot, plant second shot. Unless he tops through enough, then he could play one in the middle. He's played it softly. Oh, it's my, I thought he might have left this till last. Time. I think he has to. Yeah, he can't. Yeah. He's wired in. Yeah, just drop this in. Oh, that's Tried much. to hold it too much and the frustration Zorro from come out. Steve Smart. I <laughs> thought he was going to smite Luke Gilbert <laughs> as he stood. The Luke calls his extension, does the right thing. He just needs to pot open balls here. This match is done. 
but a little bit of a a warning for Luke. He yeah. sort of finished this match a bit untidy. He had one stretch in the middle, which which yeah. took him away, didn't it? And yeah. he played really well for about four or five frames. Took the match away from Steve Smart. But yeah, I think Steve kind of gave him the chance, though, didn't he? He just gave him that opportunity, always waiting, waiting to go for Luke to sort of get his rhythm. And uh, I say Luke should have been out the, out the match by the time he did get his rhythm, and he possibly wouldn't have got it if he uh, hadn't got the chances. But you know, first time on this table arena, match clock, and that is... Cer certainly didn't make yeah. no fool of himself, Steve Smart. I've been no, generally pretty impressed. Yeah. But uh, the Welsh Open champion is going to come a cropper of the Blessed Express. <laughs> oh. Just take these out to make the scoreline look a bit better. Come on, Steve. 14 Come seconds on, Steve. for... for Four reds, what do you Go reckon? On, he can do it. Have a skilly. Oh. No, he'll shake oh. his hand. <laughs> oh, I was getting excited then. So not to be for Steve Smart and Lightning Luke Gilbert right, makes a little bit of a meal of it in the end, but relief for Lightning Luke. Number one player, Tom Cousins, is out there. And this is the start of the second round, the winner's round one as it is in double elimination play. Both Tom and Gary Carr have already come through the first round. Both have very tough matches. We'll get into that in a minute, but they're back out there to get their second round matches played. Winner of this will be safely through and work done for the day. The loser will have to play in the loser's round later on tonight. Race to 10 as it is in the winner's side all the way through. 70 minutes on that match clock and it is Top Cat with the first opportunity, and I've got Greg Batten in the commentary box with me. Greg, great to see you. Always a fun one. You can join us in, in comms. Yeah, thanks, Simon. Yeah, pleasure to be here, and uh, yeah, looking forward to this match. Tom was pushed very hard in the first round. I think he was 4-1 down and behind pretty much all the way. I think 8-7 at one point, and then ended up winning 10-8 to get the job done over Darren Hope. Gary Carr was in a bit of a slugfest with Callum Singleton all the way through. Ended up deciding frame victory for Gary. Yeah, it's a very good win for for both, actually, because Darren is a very accomplished player. I think he plays up with uh, up around John Rose, neck of the woods, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, yeah, so actually this could promises to be a very good match because they've both come through struggles in their first round. And already Tom has developed this into a very good chance to take the first frame after what looked like a pretty poor break, but not through Tom's error. I think maybe there was either a bit of chalk on one of the front balls or they weren't quite racked correctly. The refs obviously do a fantastic job, do their best to make sure every ball's touching. But uh, it's going to take more than that to stop Top Cat by the looks of it. Yeah, I think sometimes in a tournament, especially for you know, one of the big favourites, it's, you know, you kind of got to get yourself into the tournament and maybe caught a little bit cold earlier on because we didn't see the match, we can't really say, and obviously Darren's a very good player, but now he's come through that, you know, he's nicely warmed up here. We, I actually expect Tom to play really well here, but I expect Gary to play well as well. well. Of course, the beauty of it is you've come through your first round and you're still in that lovely position where you are free rolling, you know, you know that uh, the worst that happens, you lose, you're still in the event. So for someone as good as Tom is, this is yeah, the perfect place to be. Yeah, double elimination, if you are just joining us, all the way to the last 16. When we go down to the single elimination, so the eight qualifiers through the winner's side, we'll take on eight qualifiers through the loser's side, and then it's single elimination, straight race from there. And the loser's side, I believe, is race to seven. seven. Yeah, so yeah. still a good race in the loser's side. Does that give you a little bit of freedom as a player coming in, sort of having that knowledge? Well, I think so. I mean, if it was race to five, then um, with the rules and, and everything else, it's a lot more cutthroat. Seven is still, that's the same match uh, length that we play on the tour event. So you feel like you're in a, a decent race and... Uh, the most part the best player should come through but uh, that's a, a rare error there from Tom yeah left himself just no way of getting on that 
Last yellow couldn't get across to the right-hand side of the table. We will say how important the first frames are in these matches. Gary is, uh, as you can see there, getting his hands dried and he's anticipating coming back to the table. Never count this man off though, he may find something. Just like that. Brilliant shot from Tom Cousins. And the towel's gone back down on the <laughs> table now, <laughs> Gary. Tap of the knee as well, just yeah. to say well done. Phenomenal shot. No oh, cue ball this time. Yeah, if we watch the replay of this break, his head came up pretty quickly. And, uh, yeah, your eyesight isn't then in line with what you're doing. And he only takes a little bit of side or just queuing it offline, which perhaps he's done there. Just forced the error. And this is not what he wanted to see at 3-0 down with Tom at the table. Yeah, Gary, a very confident player from Malta. Seen him play at a really high level. Plays a, you know, the game in Malta is so big and they play in so many big tournaments there and for his country. You know, I do expect him to find his game, but the problem is he might have to try and do that from 4-0 and possibly even 5-0 down the way that Tom's hit the first two breaks. Yeah, and as we know, if Tom uh, breaks anything like he can, then a 4-0 deficit is just so difficult to come back from. Any other player, you know, a couple of dry breaks, you're sort of back in it. But with Tom, very, very rarely does he not get a ball off his break. This one feels like the key shot in this frame. Just that transition and I'm not sure if he was playing on the gap to bottom left. Don't think he's on that one. He does have left centre. Can either top this in and leave the next red into the bottom left hand pocket or just stun it in and leave the half ball, which I think he's electing. There we go. So we'll just drop the red into the middle now and then leave the last two reds to finish. So it should be very routine for Tom. say that he's just okay I think yeah he's okay he can see it or the potting angle anyway who is uh, your pick for this event Simon well I think with the longer races the deeper races I think we're gonna see an stat I think we're gonna see a couple of qualifiers go really well but I do think we'll see a an established player, an established top professional winning the title as he completes the finish to make it 4-0. Let's see if Tom's break continues. It does, but so does the cue ball this time. Now then, Gary, this is your opportunity. He's had one chance in four frames. Yeah, just got airborne on that uh, on that break with a cue ball and look at these for Gary he could not wish for them to be any better to get his first frame on the board and I hope he does it because this will settle him down cannot see him coming back really from 5-0 behind against Tom Cousins but 4-1 uh, with him to break certainly back in the match yeah, if we're putting it into that sort of level of match yeah 4-1 it, it key being that he has the next break as you can already see if you haven't seen Gary play before he's very fluent gets on with it nice rhythm and as Simon said he is one of the best Maltese players they have Looks like in no time at all, 
We are going to be at 4-1. Yeah, nicely done from Gary. Needed that opportunity, he really did. Let's see what happens this time. It sounded like a better hit, and it was quite still quite a bit of side on the break there on the cue ball, but yeah, not the contact he wa would have wanted. It's uh, gone onto the left-hand cushion, but he certainly got a lot more power into it. He's very technical with his uh, with his break. If you ever ask him what he does, <laughs> he's been known to say, "I just hit him as hard as I can." <laughs> There is more to it than that. I'm he sure likes there to is. keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. The secret he keeps to himself, I think. Good layout there. So he's a little bit annoyed to be hampered here, but he's quite a tall player, so actually it's not as bad as it would be for others, myself included. Just a bit of a stretch for Tom. And the red that's in the triangle area by the eight ball does go through the gap to bottom right, so everything does have pockets here. Yeah, he's just one shot away now. As long as he can get position from this red, he should be absolutely fine. It's a thin one, so he does need to make sure he's okay here. Probably see him come into the centre of the table along that line. There we go. Now he's got choices. Can I either top this in or screw it back? do a lot with this one I think he'll either play it with a little bit of stun yeah there we go just take his medicine and rely on his good cue ball here and queuing this isn't the hardest shot for someone like Tom just below center striking one cushion back up the table track towards that sort of middle pocket line there we go and uh, that is 8-1 coming up. Gary will be in his chair, resigned really, I think, to the fact that he's going to lose this match. One of the new professionals this year, Ryan Lambeth, who's having a pretty good season already and some good results in the last tour event. He's... Uh, Won his first round earlier on today and is currently 2 0 up against uh, Rob Warren, I believe. Uh, Dave McNamara. Sorry, Dave McNamara. Yeah, the graphic so. was dropped before. <laughs> yeah. But that just shows that uh, he's doing very well. Very confident player. We saw that on the Champions League recently. Yeah, very good performance from, from Ryan. Started his pro career very well. And the faintest bit of hope here for Gary because. It's an in-off break from Tom Cousins and a beautiful layout. Eight ball needs a little bit of attention, but in the perfect position really for a double if he doesn't want to try and drop it in delicately into the right centre. Yeah, Gary would wish he could have started the match like this, completely relaxed with no expectations and uh, free-flowing. Has he come back far enough? I don't think he has. Maybe he's okay. Just. And he does have the angle to track behind the eight ball. Or move the eight ball. Let's track behind it. It is. Yeah, nicely done. From Gary. Just this eight ball for another one pulled back with time to spare. And that was the best break that he's hit all match. Took a little bit off that one, and you saw the difference in terms of the control. Cue ball straight up the centre of the table, and rewarded with a yellow going in. And this looks like a nice finish for Tom already. If he can find a red, 
cut back looks to be the best ball. Nothing you could do there. He had to cannon into the yellows. But it seems to have worked out nicely. Tom does go on and complete victory at this visit. It would be really interesting to know how he feels about this performance because it, it's low-key being excellent. I mean, we can point at what, one mistake in the whole match? I mean, two, but one of them didn't cost him because he made the pot from the snooker, so you can't really get too critical there. But maybe one you know, one missed ball. Or other than that, he's been pretty much flawless. But it doesn't feel like a flawless performance is what we're getting at. Well, it doesn't he, feel... It feels like there's, there's room to grow. Oh, and there is. But Tom is deceptively good, isn't he? He can... Without doing anything, really, he's, he's won this... Canter, and as you say, maybe only made one or two mistakes. The thing he'll probably be looking at is his break, to be honest. I think he'll uh, want to try and figure that out. If he gets that working, then uh, everyone else is in trouble because we know he's got the gears. And for Gary, this is a experience, a learning experience. He'll take this into his next match and probably perform a lot better. That's it, he's not out, he's got another chance into the loser's side. He will go if Tom Cousins can complete the job with this eight ball. He'll never in doubt for the number one player. Tom Cousins marches through to tomorrow. He's into winner's round two. He'll be back in the morning at 10 a.m. One thing I did find out there, Simon, I don't f maybe it was just me, but I struggled, struggled with a break. Didn't seem to be splitting maybe like they normally would. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's just me. I'm not sure. I think I think most players have. The, the, it, it felt like there's been some really good breaks out there. Obviously not this one. And Chris jumping the cue ball off the table, but I think we've seen a lot of tricky splits off the break. Yeah. I was tempted to go second ball down like I really? did. In my, I, I did in my first match. Did I, you? Yeah, I really. I, out in the main and uh, you pushed in that one as well. Yeah, I was uh, four one and six three down, I think. And yeah, the second half of the match I actually played quite well. I was lucky enough that he missed the black to go seven five up, I think. And then yeah, I, I played pretty good then. Yeah, is that another another bonus of having a race to ten rather than that that sort of seven six seven and eights that we see a lot with ultimate pull that the opportunity just for you to sort of you know ride a, a kind of dip at the start or your opponent playing really well and allow you to get yeah. into the match well yeah i, I went four one down and i've probably put about 10 balls <laughs> two in a row maybe and that was about it um i was really struggling but um second half of the match once i got a bit more comfy i was uh, i was okay so yeah the longer races you know I'm sure we'd all like to see longer races if we could. Yeah, that was Darren Hope. He moves on to the loser side, taking on Callum Singleton. Darren played really well, to be fair. I know it was scrappy at the start, but played played pretty good. Okay, yeah, pushed you all the way, didn't he? Even I think once once you got yourself in head ahead, he didn't crumble. He kind of stayed with you there. Yeah. And was it ten eight in the end? Yeah, 10 8. Christmas needs to make sure he doesn't land them straight on this yellow in the, into the centre. Yeah, he's got enough angle. finish in the end yeah <laughs> rattle but in it goes he needed that bit more control took some power off that one yeah lovely break that is yeah absolutely squared it up it's been a bit unlucky mind you might have to cut this thin yellow in the, in the center doesn't have a great opener does he he wants no. yellows of course but no great starter yeah i think he 
the pot is pretty comfortable. Like, you know, the white might lose a white ball or just a little bit, but um, I think he'll cut this yellow in into the right centre or left centre as you look. Uh, good shot. <laughs> Same position there. This time it's trickier though. I mean, he could play the the yellow above the bulk bulk line. Play the plant maybe if he wanted to be aggressive. Oh, that's a bit thin, I suppose, actually. Oh, Chris Melling, that is special. He played that. You saw him line it up, the treble off the red to open up the yellow. An incredible choice of shot. And then gets the next one wrong. Missed that just as we were on the replay there. I don't want to say he didn't play that because it's Chris Mellon, but... <laughs> he, lined, he did line it up. Did he really? He did line it up, yeah. I saw him line up the, the, the yellow <laughs> off the red. Yeah. What a shot there. It was an unbelievable <laughs> shot. squeeze by the yellow and open up the pocket and doing so as well mm, looks a bit tight from here I think he the red that's closest to the uh, oh he, he must go Gee. Yeah. didn't look like it went from my angle but Cut this in, play the cannon. Great shot. Just looking comfy up there. Isn't it hard enough? No. Clipping off the red, off the yellow, to put the red. <laughs> oh, you lucky oh, boy. what a <laughs> result that is. I mean, that's as good a result as he could have dreamed of. He obviously must have been playing the shot that you were playing. That's not, yeah, I'm not what he's that trying that to do. Like that one. <laughs> if he has, it's <laughs> incredible. I don't even... I can't see this yellow, can he? Oh, he had... To, he had to squeeze the gap. Oh, has Chris got away with it? Mm. I'll tell you what, you take that, I think. Yeah, you can see, I think you can see half ball on both. Maybe can't, can you see the one down the right and pot it? Probably. Oh, good shot. I don't think he could screw out from there. Very happy with these reds. These are gone, Simon. <laughs> sure yeah. with this. He'll be over the moon with these, and he's not going to hang about either. 
<laughs> I was sort of expecting him to get to this stage a little bit earlier. That was the quickest brake clearance of the day. <laughs> Chris Melling has flown through that one. Yeah, no explosion in the pack there, but he's got a ball still. Yeah, a strange one, really. Playing this off the red. If he gets this perfect, it's over. And he has. Another one that looked horrible, and he's had to play one good shot. But it's, it's more the vision of the shot than the execution, but it was still a good shot. And then he can make it look simple. Yeah, there's so many players that wouldn't have thought about that, but you know, if they did, they, they'd probably get it a lot of the time as well. But Chris just sees it faster than anybody and, and that's why he's one of the very best in the world yeah this eight ball then to complete victory for the magician Chris Smelling marches on he's into tomorrow morning's winners round two solid performance from Chris maybe not quite his full fluent best but still had plenty for Chris Hampson Jonathan Coleman is with us so too is Osama Maskini. It is Wales versus Morocco in the British Open out in the main arena table and the small tiger has let rip with a big break but it is going to be dry. Having said that, Jonathan Coleman doesn't look like he's heading towards the table. Thought we just had a problem there but I have just heard time running so Jonathan Abel's come to the table now and like to say joining me on on commentary is the cookie monster himself, Matt Cook with us. The uh, soon to be winner, I'm sure, of the Ultimate Pool Best Shirt competition on Facebook. Well, thanks for having me, Jamie. Unfortunately, I went out in the first round. Joke. I did, I'm afraid. I was, I was really upset by that. <laughs> yeah, I thought, well, I am now. I've found out about that. Yeah. I thought uh, you were a shoe in for the, well, the final, at least. I thought I had a chance, but I lost to Dave Fernandez, so. Oh, it's, it's a good one, but I mean, yeah. you know, you've got the actual cookie it. monster on your shirt, yeah. I know. Worth more than ranking points, those sorts well, of things. Well, I was expecting some ranking points for it, but <laughs> didn't, I didn't wear that shirt today, I should have done. Yeah, it might have given you a bit, a bit, a bit more luck, eh? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. It'll come out tomorrow if I get through. Yeah, absolutely, mate, too right. Who have you got later on? Uh, I believe I've got Adam Toms. Uh, okay. Tricky game, but... Yeah, tricky game for sure. Yep. This should be a close game, I think, this one. Both good players, both international should be close, I think. Yeah, absolutely, I think so. I think, I think that was the, uh, the schedulers decision as well. We're putting the, uh, the best games on for the top half of the losers round one. I believe, don't shoot the messenger if this is wrong, but I believe the next match uh, on the main arena table is gonna be Vivek Mack versus John McAllister. Those are the whispers at the moment, which is a fantastic loser's round one well, match, goodness me. I watched uh, John McAllister against Scott Yardley in the first round. Yeah, Scott, it was Scott a fantastic result for Yardley, you got to say. Yeah. Really, so really well. impressive. One of those sorts of results where you, you, you can almost feel it around the venue and, you know, oh, geez, nine, nine, six up on him, Yeah, well, I practice with Scott every week and he's been playing that way every week is he's playing so well oh, and he's great. also my pair's cup partner so well yeah good omens for yeah. you then eh? yeah very nice yep. Jonathan's run through these really nicely so far tricky little yeah. black it's not a gimme is it just get it but just got to mind his work it always makes me feel a little bit more human when I see top players do that sort of <laughs> do that sort of lining up on the table there we go, in it flies. Good shot from Jonathan Coleman. Enjoy the wall to wall action with us this evening on Ultimate Pool TV. Another tepid cut break from Jonathan Coleman. He has a lot of action on them, doesn't he? Yeah, but for how well, for how sort of hard he strikes them rather than well, because he does strike them well. But for how hard he hits them, he, he does seem to get quite a bit on it. Skinny looking at reds then and really has to 
to rumble here, does the small tiger. Any issue he's got really is the one in the bottom left, you'd think. been a summer's day, I think that's fair to say. So I like a summer's visitors now. Jonathan's only got one problem and it's the same same section table. chance of uh, a match winning clearance yeah potentially more than half a chance as well he's just got to work the yellow at the bottom left a little bit believe it goes bottom right possibly maybe half a pocket yeah I was just trying to work out where it went right middle I think it would do if we can get down there He's now got a friend down there. It's quite straight on this. I don't think he can do much with the white ball. Yeah, just chooses to draw back and that's... A fairly sensible decision, I would suggest. I think he's left the chance though, he's left the red in the bottom right. Could give an opportunity to break the other red out. Played yeah, that well. played that really well. Probably the right decision from Jonathan Coleman, but maybe not the right execution, hey. black it's not one he wanted yeah, he's missed a similar shot to this already in the match white ball. oh he's got away with white. I thought it was heading towards the pocket <laughs> that white <laughs> well it was it was the, it the was. yellow has saved him watch this this is in all day I think mean, he's not past it didn't it well that's a crunch or a break well, I mean, that's the one thing Osama's had going for him all all day, really, is his break has been absolutely unbelievable. Doubles. Tried to move his badge out of there and just missed it. Would not sure if it goes bottom left, I think it might. Oh, it does, so. Yeah, he's actually, what. he didn't need to move it. Yeah, he could rattle off another quick finish here. He's definitely playing with a spring in his step. Small Tigers on the prowl. Nicely cued. Yeah, slightly hampered here. No. Oh, he just rushed that. Yeah. That was really horrible queuing, and he just rushed it. I didn't expect him to miss it, though. I thought... Just didn't need to play that quickly. No. He, he, I mean, I know he obviously is up against it on the clock, but he had an extra few seconds just to make sure on that shot. 
certainly did. This is a real big opportunity now for Jonathan Coleman to win the match. Not much work to do at all. No, this should be it. Should be it. So would this mean the Sama is the first casualty? It would. Of the whole event? It would. First man to be officially knocked out. He received that ignominy. Jonathan Coleman stays alive, though. Go straight on this one in the bottom left. Simple stun. Been a good performance by Jonathan. You have to give him a lot of credit. Yeah, it's been it's been one that I'm sure Simon Maschini will have some regrets over. He had plenty of chances, particularly in the early stages of that match. But John's got a great chance here. I, I really fancy yellows, but he's looking at the reds. Um. Yeah, it, it's it's got to be yellows just for the eight ball, right? And I do think the eight ball goes, but it's just this red below this yellow he's playing now. If he did yeah. choose reds, it's very difficult to get on that. But I can see the argument for reds, but for me, I think yellows are just that bit nicer. So for me here, I reckon I'd probably pop the yellow near the red now, and I'd be looking at getting on the yellow into the left centre for an angle where I can go over to the right hand side cushion, and then you can play the one down the rail. So he's gone too far for that route. And then I was thinking left centre, eight ball, near the eight ball, and then obviously left centre again, drop in. That would have been my part. Oh, he's not got much here. He looks like he's, if anything, he's off straight slightly the wrong way. Yeah, I think he's looking at just finding the gap now. He's going to just draw it back an inch. But that yellow on the side rail on the right side, um, it's not an easy ball to get nicely on um, no. from what he's got left. That's not his best shot, he has lost a cue ball there. Um, he's in a bit of trouble to be fair. No matter which yellow he takes, it's very difficult to get on the next. Um. So the yellow to right centre, it looks like he may kiss the red closest to the ball cushion, so he's not going to have a shot. And this yellow to the right centre here, is, um, it's very difficult to control. Yeah, well he's running away, isn't he, with it's the cue ball? It's very difficult, yeah. Oh, how, good a a how good a shot is that? Couldn't have picked that up better with your hand, really. That is A1 position. Oh, that's a great shot from John McAllister. Very, very good. Yeah, he was looking in a bit of trouble there, but he's well, found it. Well, there'll be a part of him that's annoyed because all top quality players do that you know when even if they've got out if they've made a couple of mistakes in it and they've had to play a really good shot to recover it they'll never be satisfied with that he'll, he'll be irritated but the ability there to recover that situation which looked a little bit lost was pretty special from John McAllister that cue ball is safe <laughs> that was <laughs> that, he, he might have looked calm Vivek but that was certainly a frustrated break so that was Irritators you can possibly look when you're breaking off, really. Yeah, you just give them a bash, really. You don't really put much into it. <laughs> well, he's just had a big old swing, and typically it's split pretty far and wide. He's not made a ball, and I think the writing is on the wall, sadly, for Vivek Mackett. Yeah, he's left a... They look tricky, but they're not actually as bad as they look. Um, once he plays the plant in the middle, as long as he gets on the red ball closer to the yellow ball, he's actually got a big enough window for the cue ball to fit through the black and uh, through the eight ball and the yellow. So um, these are not too bad at all, really. Red ball's in play. But he hasn't played the greatest of shot there. I'm not sure he can get it down to the bottom, bottom red now. I think the yellow's in the way. So you may see him pop the one bottom left now, come off the side cushion. Um, so he's doing a bit of a reroute here, I believe. A 
and now he's okay. Um, this red here, he looks like he's got a lot of angle, but he will just put rakes and rakes of right hand spin on here, which is um, run inside. So it will make the cue ball speed up off the cushion and come low. He can play the one in the middle and try and get straighter, but I'll be amazed if he doesn't play this with lots of right hand side. You'll be able to see the cue ball dots spinning now because he's trying to get on the red below the eight ball here. Very surprised with that. Well, I think he's still on it. He, he sort of just played it a little bit more sort of plain ball, if you like, a bit more guaranteed. Yeah, for someone who's so good with using the side spin as well with John, that was, for me, he just had to play that fairly slow with lots of right-hand side spin, and the cue ball would have naturally hit the lower half of that yellow he's hit, and then he would have been on that red. Um, so this is extremely difficult now to clear up here. I really can't see how he gets back on that red. It just seems so difficult. Oh, can he get there now? Yeah, possibly, but the window's so small. Um, <laughs> I yeah. didn't say it wasn't small. Yeah. <laughs> it's tight, isn't it? I think it's got to be the attempt, though. It's the only way he gets out. So it looks like he's going low here. Unless he's dropping it. Oh, he is. I think no he's had good. the same result as before. Yeah, he's in deep trouble now, really. This, this red in the centre. He's a bit off angled the wrong way, really. I think the cue ball's screwing into the sort of the yellow and eight ball region. Um, Might not be the worst idea, mind. Yeah, you're just hoping for a bit of help here. Like you say, he's going to be hitting close to that yellow on the, the line or the eight ball. You know, you then, fight, you're five nil up, it wouldn't be yeah. it wouldn't be unquestionable for John to screw this all the way back and come up smelling of roses. Yeah, it tends to work when you're winning rather than losing. He's played a good shot. Yeah, look at that. Oh, is the eight ball just coming his way? I think it has. I think he's on the red, but the eight ball's got no pocket now. I think the eight ball's sat on the yellow. Um, so I think, yeah. So the reason for that is now he's looking at, I think he may be able to pop this red, but he's got no shot on the eight. So he's looking at playing the red off a couple of cushions to leave the cue ball where the red is. And then he can play the double on the eight ball in the middle. That's his thought process here, but it's extremely difficult. So much so he's refusing it and playing a safety. I'm not sure about that because he's, he's effectively just give the frame away there. For me, he should have had a bit of a bash like... Yeah, go go down swinging. Yeah, for me, like, no one should really lose a frame from here. He's got so much control with Vivek. He hasn't got a go. He's got no pressure. Um, so, yeah, a bit of a strange choice there from John. I get the sense Vivek will go. And that won't do his confidence any good. I know it's gone in, but he's not, he's not cued that the best. Great positional shot, mind. <laughs> Frustrated figure. Yeah, they look harder than the area as well. These are actually quite comfortable because both the yellows pass to the bottom right. So as long as he gets anywhere on this left side of the table, he can run either of them through to the white on the ball um, to the bottom cushion, and then he's on the yellow below the eight ball. So he'll be aiming for the red now to kiss the red, and that's pretty much frame. As long as he can get out, I'm pretty sure he can just draw the cue ball back off the side cushion. If not, he can just stun it in and play the yellow to the left centre. He's got a few options. So there he's chosen this latter option. Um, yeah, fairly routine here. Just pop the ball room forward. Oh, wow. Very surprised with that. Not been Vivek's night so far. Yeah, he's really not at the races here. He's had a few opportunities now and um, he just don't seem himself out there. We talked how important it is to, for every player to to feel settled in a match, and you said it yourself earlier that even the best players can end up making themselves look silly if they never quite get going. And John is going to put Vivek in a bit of a world of pain here. Yeah, he's played that really nice. Um, who doesn't put a yellow here? He's lost a frame. He's had a bit of a bash. What a loss of turn. <laughs> Sadly, that's it. <laughs> He's well, still going to pot the eight ball. Yeah, that oh, is conceded. Well, no big surprise there for me, Vivek. A figure of frustration. It really did. Everything went against him. And this is also from the loser's side of the draw, as it will be for the rest of the evening. The loser of this one is on their way home. Neil Raybone and Gary Clark. It is Neil that gets us underway with the opening break, and I am actually genuinely excited to say that I am joined in commentary by Chaos Cole Bedford. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you, mate. Yeah, I've had a 
good day. I've won two matches, which is uh, better than I thought I was going to do the way I've been playing. So, yeah. All nice good. nice to go well, in the, and then you can have a nice evening where you don't have to do anything other than come and join us and have some fun watching you know, some of the other guys try and battle it out to get back into the into the tournament. Yeah, exactly. It's a, a nice little privilege. I've got a, I'll have a tough match tomorrow. I've got Wadnam, but yeah, I'd rather have him than have to worry about playing tonight. Is that how it feels, though, in terms of if you're, you know, Neil and, and Gary both suff suffered tough losses, especially Neil, who was in front of a lot of his match earlier on, you feel like that's a long way back into the tournament from the loser's side, especially it, if you get into it early. This is, yeah, because the, these two lost first, first poke, didn't they? First they did, match, yeah. So, God, what, how many matches have we got to win? Do we get back in? I think Seven? you'd have to win six more to six. make the make the qualifying to, to make, make the, the last 16. sixteen. Yeah. So you've got to effectively win ten matches in a row to win the tournament, which, yeah, is uh, does not sound fun. I must admit. But if it, Neil, I'm not sure, I'm not saying Gary isn't capable of doing that, but Neil is the sort of person, the sort of character that I think could do that. To be fair, he's the sort of player that's just he'll take one ball, one frame at a time, and you know he's not. He's always given you the, the impression, always given me the impression he's capable of just, you know, dealing with one match at a time and not getting too carried away too far ahead and will keep just churning out. He's, and he plays a, an all-round game that allows him to play at a level by like, all the time. You never yeah. see his level really drop. Although, having said that, Monday night in the, in the Champions League, he didn't play. That's the worst I've seen him play. Although, he did say afterwards, not as an excuse, he just said he was under the weather and, and was really struggling. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people here have been ill. I was really ill last, last weekend. I was quarters of Pro Series 2 and it was only because of he made a bad mistake I think to get to the hill and then Luke played really well from there I think but he was he played really well in the match he just made one bad mistake to go 6-4 up and Luke was no 6-3 up I think and Luke played absolutely brilliant from there so yeah he is definitely back playing very well again yeah good to see Call. Neil with another very good break there. Would expect him to clear these yellows, but there is a little bit of work, a couple of gaps to find. Oh, big surprise, especially how the way Neil started. You could tell he wasn't comfortable queuing up for that across the cushion. Still a big surprise. He missed that by quite a long way. Chance for Gary to try and get himself into this match. Try and forge an opportunity. Happy to try and do the right thing, play the loss of turn. I might be wrong, but I don't think that's a great shot. I think he's left the yellow off the red, and he can bang the red straight into the yellow. I know he's relying on a little bit of luck for it to come out, but yeah, I feel like he can bang this out, and I feel like the yellow is naturally going to go to the right-hand side of the table as well, off the red maybe. Brilliant shot from Neil. I was going to say, it looked like it was naturally going off the red towards the right-hand side of the table, and that's exactly what's happened. Yeah, brilliant stuff from the Razor. And that should be 3-0. Yeah, it doesn't allow the poor Miss Pot to affect him. Just gets back, at, back to it next time he's at the table. And... Didn't look like there was any damage done from Gary, but fully punished. Oh, Ooh, he has got there. I thought he done. I thought he was short then. I must admit. Everybody that's played on the table today said that the bed of the table is playing like glass, but the cushions are playing a little bit on the soft side. Messaged me and I had to go to boot for him, and he was. Fe he said he was feeling dreadful. So he has hit and Patel at scheduled for nine o'clock. I think they're about half an hour behind on the outer arenas. So. 
and it will be sometime between 9 and 10. Chance for Gary then. Good chance for uh, Gary here. Yeah, just checking if that red passes the yellow to the bottom corner. Doesn't look like it does. I'm going to make a case for, you're going to think this sounds nuts, the top left pocket off the cushion off the yellow. And that was the perfect ball to get there, if that was the yeah. plan. Because if it, it doesn't look like it goes past this yellow to me off the camera angles. Um, especially... Even more so the overhead, I feel like it doesn't look like it doesn't go at all, so... It must go off, Gary, looking at Gary's body language, it must go. Yeah, the one that might be more awkward is the one in the middle of the table, unless that goes top right. Well, the way he's played this, it must go... To the bottom left. Doesn't look like there's enough showing. But he's chasing the white here. He's in a little bit of trouble now. He's just moved the yellow off the pocket as well, so he can't play the shot I suggested. And I don't see... Let it double to the bottom right pocket. I can't really see what he's got here. Unless he goes into the middle, actually. Into the left centre. Try to move the yellow so the double goes. Yeah, he's in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, open up the uh, top drawer here. He needs to find something. I, I don't think the double goes to the bottom Tr right. So, I, yeah, I can't really see a shot here. Off the oh, what a shot! Oh, that's brilliant! Oh, what an amazing word, shot! What a shot from Gary Clark. Wow, that is a massive shot. I was going to say, the only shot he's got is off the yellow, but <laughs> I'm surprised. Oh. Can he drop, drop the gap between the yellow and the red on near this bottom rail and hit the red to leave himself on the yellow? Yeah, that would still leave him a lot of work, but would deal with the one at the bottom of the table. I, I feel like if he hits the red full in the face, he'd leave the angle to go into the red and yellow together then as well. Might be wrong, but, but... He still has to open up the eight ball as well. Oh, yeah. God, there's a lot of work here. There's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about the black. When you look at it... Oh, he's going to play the... Oh, OK, oh, so he's going to play the combo. But then this yellow still doesn't go. <laughs> Tell you what you could play here now. Play the skilly and screw into the red that's blocking the pocket. And then he can naturally... F oh, no. He's ignoring me. Yeah, I see what you're saying, though, because he would leave himself on the ball he's playing now. Yeah. Can get on the one on the cushion, and then the one to low the red top goes bottom low, left. Yeah. yeah. Would have been a route out. Uh, this is tough to keep the pocket covered here, in my opinion. I might be wrong, but it looks like he's going to have to double kiss it in. There's a chance that the yellow will pop up and leave it so the red goes. Double kiss. No. That might go still. I think that goes and off the jaw, off the yellow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this goes jaw, yellow in. So I think Neil's got a relatively routine finish here. Just need to make sure he leaves. I, I, I would have been tempted personally there to top off the rail and leave the red which with the yellow together into the middle first, but I think he'll play this off the jaw, off the yellow. Oh, he's got lucky, he's got the double kiss. If he didn't get the double kiss though, he didn't leave anything. Odd shot, but...
had a weird shot there. He um, played the red off the yellow off the jaw and got away with it, the double kiss. I feel like this is really big moments in this match, right here and now. Definitely. Landed perfect by the look. Oh, he's in off. Wow, that's a bad shot. Yeah, 6-3 right there. The skew ball stays on the table. He's one away. Oh. Flick on the yellow. I don't like, like I said, I don't like to be too critical, but I, that was quite a glaring mistake, really, from Neil. That was obvious if you got into it too much, you were screwing it off. Five four with Gary to break, and we're about to get. We're not far off getting into the fun part with the. Uh, uh, this is a horrible feeling if you break dry air. You feel like it could be your last shot in the match. Hit oh, some well, key ball. Oh, how's that not going in? Oh my life! <laughs> oh, he's dry. Holds up his hand. There is a. I think he can pop the red here. It's dry, but Neil will have the have a chance, obviously. But this isn't a good layout. Call. How do you like this? It's six five down and it tournament like on the line. Looks like it's touching the yellow. Yeah, I don't think he can cut this back. It's just going to be a safety off the red. Yeah. Made sure of not disturbing a red and yellow, which are the biggest stumbling blocks for for Gary here, and try to get the red in the mix of the other yellows. He's done can half a job on that. Can he clip this thin and go into the? Red and yellow? Half ball on the red would be nice. Yeah. It's fair to say dropping onto it. Is he? Well, that's yeah, he? Is that invited a chance for Neil? I feel like he's definitely dang dangled the carrot here and said, go on, you have a go. Yeah, he has. And, oh, Neil's played a nothing shot. Oh, he's on the plant, actually. The yellow at the top of the table is awkward to develop, but it's not too bad for the the double. How, how does he get on the yellow by the on the top bottom rail as well? I suppose he can get there now, can he? He's going to deal with the one at the top. He's got an angle to move it. Shot. If the yellow on the bottom rail now, though, doesn't go past the red on what is now oh, top uh, left of your screen. Yeah, bottom left. I do think it goes. Bottom left. Yeah, if it It's does tight, go, but I do okay. think it goes. From the overhead, because of the angle, the camera's in the middle of the table, it distorts it just enough, but I do think it squeezes to bottom left. Got to cue this in first. Oh, it's no good. Oh, yeah. He can get high on it to bottom right, but it's going to be a horrible shot. Oh, that's a great shot. That's as good as... I didn't think you could do that, really. I think you've just got to try and... I know it makes a uh, pot tougher, but trace it in with left-hand side to hit the red, personally. I feel like you try and just drop it like that, and it just makes the pot too missable. Oh, I beg him for it to fall, and it refuses. 2.40 left. Gary Clark with the chance here. I think that just made the pot too missable for me. I think you had to just commit more to the pot and try and hit the red. With a little bit of top left. Oh, the time remaining here is an interesting one. Gary, if he he's got to, if he plays safe, he's got to play a brilliant safety. If he goes, he's got to get it because I don't think he can run the clock down enough to run it out. He only has to leave what five, ten seconds for Neil to be able to play the two shots, and it's not a guarantee with that red on the right hand side here. Uh, he's put, will he go now into it? Looks natural. Oh, yes. Yeah, look natural to play the one bottom left. And I feel like he's trying to run the clock, but he hasn't got. You can't run the clock. Yeah, there's still two minutes yeah. left. So even if you use 15 for the four shots remaining, you're going to leave enough time if you don't make it. Has to get out here. Otherwise, could be staring at a six red shootout. Never. Oh, he's nowhere. Oh, he's just got there. It looked like he was going on the red. I thought. 
Yeah, it's just turned half a turn, isn't it, to yeah. the right? Looked like it did slightly fall. Yeah, which can happen around the triangle area. Yeah, definitely. That's the shot I thought he'd play he's earlier jawed. on. He's jawed. Oh, oh no. Do, do you go for this? Uh, what, do you know what I play here? I top right to, I think, the bottom on the screen on the overhead, the bottom right pocket, I think. No, he's playing safe off it. That Oh, that's crazy. You're leaving him a dead straight pot. I don't like that. I think if you're going to play safe, I think you have to go to the top, top right. Top pocket. right, make it as awkward as possible. Like top it through, yeah. That's a crazy shot in my opinion, but his personal preference. Missed no. It. No. Now, 50 seconds left here for Gary. 30 seconds to play two shots. He's He has to get out here still. Yeah. He still Let's can't he, run the clock. Unless he hits the red a thousand miles an hour yeah. and just keeps running around the table. Which, I tell you what, I'd be tempted to do if he doesn't land on it. Oh, what a shot, Gary Clark. What oh, a what shot. a shot. That is a match winner acknowledged by Neil Raybone. That is very special. He still needs to knock this one in, but to get where he has was a brilliant shot. And that confirms it. Gary Clark has turned things around and he has won this match. Neil Raybone had his chances, didn't take them. And some brilliant performances, some brilliant finishes from Gary Clark in a match he had to grind and he gets the job done. He keeps his tournament alive. And how about this as a way to do it? If he overhits it, he pots the eight ball. Under hits it, he's nowhere. Greg Batten taking on Liam White in the loser's side round two of the British Open. And he's going to kick off with a dry break. Race to seven, 50 minutes on the match clock. These two ultimate pool professionals. How about Gary Clark though, Simon Webb? That was, that was a pretty special finish that he, he took out there against Neil Raybone and just goes to show, doesn't it, how brutal this field can be. You do that in the first round losers match against Neil Raybone, pretty tough draw as it was. Well played, Gary, yeah, Sean Story next, pal. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> tough, but it just shows you the, the, the tour and obviously we've got 64 professionals here and 64 qualifiers and yet, you know, I don't know what the numbers are for the opening round, you know, there's an awful lot of professionals that have been beaten by the qualifiers and it just shows you the strength and depth in the pool world. You know, we've got another two professionals here in the loser's side of the draw. You know, it's and that but you mentioned Gary, I thought the that was a tough match for him. You know, he's playing a really tough match player in Neil Raybone, who didn't have his best match, but be honest there, but everything that Gary had to go out was tough. Everything he had in front of him was tough and he just had to keep grinding and he took out a couple of naughty finishes along the way and you know, that final frame was everything that you get with Ultimate Pool. It had the, the match clock, it had the drama, it had the twists, and it it had a it's a completely different dynamic to the finish that is incredibly exciting. And the players that embrace that really entertain us. And that was a really one of my favourite matches of the day, if not the my favourite match of the day. Tough four nil. He'll come again in another event. Whereas Gary straight back in action against Sean, as you already said surprising miss early here by Liam that was a not a good start for him had Greg with me on commentary a little bit earlier on after he lost his opening match and he said that he didn't really do anything wrong he played he felt he played very well in his opening match which just shows you the the strength in the in the field a tough opening loss for him Played against Ryan Francis and 10-8 defeat for him. Greg won in the losers round one by beating Stuart Colclough 7-1. Comfortable victory for him and hopefully he played himself into a little bit of form in, in doing so. Yeah, like I say, I don't think he, he felt like he didn't do too much wrong in the opening match. He just lost a high quality game. The hardest thing about going into the loser's side in round one is just the mental strength that you're still in the tournament and you've got to but you've got to go and win six matches to get yourself back into 
into contention back into the last 16 it's, it's just a tough place to be obviously the every round you go in the winner's side it's the it's a round or two less you have to play in the loser's side so it does make a huge difference mm. put it into perspective as he's on a simple eight ball here to win the opening frame so punish that miss from Liam White it's a 10-8 defeat to Lewis Roberts for Liam White which is why he sat in that chair Al Sutton Matty Challen Dave Arnold will take on Connor Jones Jack Whelan John Rowe Josh Kane Rona McCarthy Scott Gillespie, Carl Morris, Lewis Roberts, Sean Chipperfield, Scott Pope, Eddie Barker, Scott Yardley, Reese Townsend, all qualify a match up there. Christy Caulfield, Luke Gilbert, and Ian Alley versus Chris Melling. Wow, some good matchups there, isn't there? Very exciting. And worth pointing out if you win that match. Well, I believe that's a. Uh, is that it? winner's qualification the next round? Yeah, they've two. So anybody that wins wins from the winner's side tomorrow makes the last 16 tomorrow night. They'll be in the draw for the last 16. The draw, obviously, eight players go through on the winner's side, eight players through on the loser's side, and obviously losers play the winners. So, yeah, two matches required for anybody that is in that 10 o'clock session tomorrow morning. All oh, fun and games. coming up here for Liam he wouldn't mind making both but he's not going to he would have loved for both to have dropped there he would be giving him a great chance as it is Greg needs to find a way to clear that red Very clever. <coughs> now is he going to look for a loss of turn of his own? He's flat to that right side rail, which means he can't really do loads with the cue ball. He'd love to be able to hide it somewhere, but he's already taken one of Liam's reds off the table. He's looking to do another here. Yeah, and it looks like he... Well, actually, the way he's played that, he wasn't trying to take the red off, I think. Maybe he was just trying to sit it right on top and make it a really horrible ball for Liam. 
yeah, in the end he's he's not really achieved that. And this is a gettable chance now for Liam White. It's not easy, but it's gettable. Oh, that couldn't have come out any better for Danger Mouse. And he's going to get himself on the board. days though it may be Greg Batten looking to break the back of this match that was a lovely shot looks by far and away the more confident player and even at this as I say relatively early juncture still you know, not even half of the match clock played it may already look a long way back for Liam White here. That's pretty good again. Just wonder if the red on the left side rail plays big at all here. It's okay if he hits it. The only thing it could, if he hits it badly, he could snooker himself with it, but oh, he just floats by it. Nice. So it was just one of those. It just had to execute. But you can tell he, it's not, sometimes you, obviously the scoreline says 4-1, but you could just the way the game's gone, he's looked the stronger of the two players. He looks more confident. Body language is good. Cue ball. Oh, it gets saved. God, how's that dry? Yeah. How's it dry? How did the cue ball not get kicked in here? I looked certain for a, a second. And then it was tracking the top cushion as well. That's in without that nudge. Pinball. Yeah, another opportunity though for Liam. Obviously, he'll still feel like he's not really got a way back into this match, but just got to keep taking them out and seeing where you're at that's a four-man team if ever there was the P Houdini Jezza and the Rocket Extension call. Yeah. 
Just wondering at what point you start thinking about things from Greg Batten's perspective. You know, this is a Greg Batten break. If Liam can find the finish, and he's got the bad angle here, actually, so he's far from certain for it, but can he turn it around if he takes the next one out? All of a sudden, it's 6-4. And you never know. beauties of this game is how quickly it can change. Just. And this one must go, but it's very awkward. How do you get from here to the, the eight ball? That is a very good question. This could be his last shot in this year's tournament. One cushion, two cushion, three cushion. Oh, what, a sh what a shot. Shot, Liam. Factor in the fact he's out if that doesn't work. That's incredible. Still has to make this, of course. Oh, no. Oh, no. To play such a good shot to get yourself on the eight ball, that is, I mean, Liam livid. Yeah, and, and like I just said, you know, this that's for 6-3. He has the break and players think in terms of they're going to make a break clearance. All of a sudden it's 6-4. And that's all of a sudden when Greg's going to start thinking about it. And now he's just got an absolute roadmap to wrap the match up. Oh, brutal. Yeah, just he's not been at the races in this match, and I think that's just the the tournament really, the nature of it. You know, going straight out of the losers' side, at the winner's side, straight into the losers' side, and having to dig deep. And he's not found it. Liam will come back. He's a very good player. He'll respond. He'll be back pro series in a few weeks' time. But Greg Batten four balls away from. from victory. Liam White will regret that last eight ball, I think. Well, what I think he'll regret more from that match was the slow start. It just gave Greg Batten that little bit too much time to settle. 